Last week, Channel 2 ran a news report which exposed some rather mundane misogyny on the part of the IDF top brass, who tell their female subordinates exactly how they like their drinks served to them. In the hallway of the 14th floor of the Kirlia, someone spied a drink list publicly displayed that listed the preferences of all the military and security high command. On the surface, this was one of those typical evening news segments which poke fun at the powerful, their fetishes, and their foibles. But this sort of criticism deals only with the surface of reality and doesn't probe any deeper. In this particular case, producers got much more than they bargained for because by displaying the list on the air with the names and ranks of the IDF and Intelligence High Command, the report exposed the identity of two of Israel's most senior and most secret security figures, the Deputy Shabak Chief and the IDF Commander of Israel's nuclear arsenal. Frankly, the military censor must have been asleep at the switch, otherwise I can't explain how such a critical set of secret information was exposed. The list was shown on air, but in subsequent displays those two names were fudged so you couldn't read them. Thankfully, some Israelis were sharp enough to realize that what was happening and relay this to me. Though I exposed their names in my blog, alas, I can't hear. If I did, they'd have to kill you. That was a joke. But seriously, I want social TV to continue to do its important work, and naming these names might endanger that. Here's what I can tell you about the identity of these two figures who otherwise live in the shadows. The Shabak deputy chief is reputed to have luxurious tastes in his office fixtures. Ha'aretz wrote a news piece about the deputy Shabak chief when he was summoned back to, from the U.S. by Yoram Cohen, the, uh, Shabak, the new incoming Shabak chief. Before this latest posting, N, as he was designated, served as chief of North American security at Israel's mission to the United Nations. He's in his 50s, and earlier in his career, he served in the Sayyarat Matkal. He spent his entire intelligence career in operations rather than interrogations, and he's had little experience with running agents or counter-terror, according to, ha to Haaretz. Now, about the IDF commander who controls Israel's nuclear arsenal. I can tell you more. His family name is well known to Israelis familiar with national politics. His father was even once leader of Meretz. In fact, the only reason I know any of this is that the official IDF website exposed his identity, noting that at the time he was chief of the Chatzor airbase. Haaretz ha picked up on this. In its article, by the way, Haaretz called him Uri. So now, in effect, Brigadier General Uri has been exposed twice. But returning to the Meretz connection, I find it incredibly ironic that a child of the Israeli left and the Jewish political party that is most critical of Israeli militarism is in charge of Israel's most destructive weapons. I don't know whether to laugh or cry, cry at the irony of this. If you go to my blog, you can read the names of these two individuals whom the Israeli censor has foolishly determined to be too important to be known. The Israeli cult of secrecy forbids that citizens know critical information that is freely available to citizens of most other democracies. There are those who may argue the reason for this is that Israel has enemies who would take advantage of such knowledge if it were publicly available. That may satisfy some, but are there not even more enemies seeking the secrets of U.S. intelligence? Yet if it wants to, yet if I want to, I can easily find out who commands the U.S. nuclear arsenal. Knowing this does not compromise the security of the weapons or even of the general himself. The benefit of transparency in such cases is that it allows us to hold such individuals accountable for their actions. Citizens of other democracies want to know who holds their fate in his hands. They don't permit such a veil of secrecy between themselves and their military. I expose their identities in my blog because I strongly believe that secrecy destroys democracy. There is no good reason to conceal the names of Israeli intelligence officials unless they are serving undercover and protecting their identity is key to protecting their life. In Israel, the intelligence apparatus gets away with far too much opacity, far too much covering of its ass when it errs. We can see that phenomenon displayed in the case of Ben Zigir. 
where we know next to nothing not only about why he was imprisoned, but who ordered him jailed, and who was responsible for his death. I want N and Uli to be held accountable for their actions and decisions. I don't want them to hide behind anonymity. This has been Richard Silverstein. Thanks for watching, and I am with uh, Tikkun Olam Blah.